We're going to introduce um, Brian Quick and his family. Um, I think he's going to come up with Rob. Yep. Fantastic. So we're honored that everybody is here tonight, and Brian certainly uh, has one of the loudest voices I've ever heard. He's asked for me to speak to him tonight, but uh, anybody that's gotten to know Brian, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she knows him, man. So you know his spirit, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure he'll have some other words tonight too as we go through this. Um, but, but we are very happy, very honored to have everybody here tonight. Brian's going to have a few things to go through. One of the first things uh, that we're going to uh, mention uh, about who Brian is was written uh, by one of the people that are here tonight in support, and that's Bradley J. Pyle. Hey, Brad. Brad was, <laughs> Brad was one of the newer nurses in 2008 uh, with Brian, and they composed this at uh, the annual Trek camp. And uh, I think it does quite a bit to uh, to see how Brad has elegantly put the words of, of who Brian is, and I think there's a real connection that uh, Brian and Brad ha had, because when you read this, and if you know my brother, uh, it rings true. <laughs> so the, the title of the poem is I Am, and it goes like this. I am Brian Quick. I wonder how today will go. I hear the subtle noises of camp. I see the browns, greens, and earth e shades. I want to have some fun today. I am Brian Quick. I pretend I like my new nurse. <laughs> I feel cool here in the shade. I touch everyone around me. I worry? No, not me. I cry only when I use my eye drops. <laughs> I am half man, half beast. I understand the ways of the world. I say, we will do things my way. I dream my friends will live a good life. I try to be the best person I know how. I hope Notre, <laughs> I hope Notre Dame has a winning season. <laughs> I am Brian Quick. <laughs> presentation that was put together by um, some family members here, Brad, and we'd like to show as well. In the U.S., there are more than 5 million Americans living with disabilities as a result of traumatic brain injury, and all of our stories are different. My name is Brian Quick. The story I'm about to share is my own. I was born July 16, 1978, in Houston, Texas. I'm the third of four kids, so as you can imagine, things could get pretty crazy for my parents when we were younger. And don't let looks deceive you. We might seem like angels, but my older brother Rob and I were constantly getting into fights. But when push came to shove, we had each other's backs no matter what. Growing up, we moved around a lot, from Indiana to Ohio, Ohio down to Texas, Texas over to Oklahoma, and then back up to Indiana. Apart from my parents, we were all born in different states. In August of 89, we made our final cross-country trek, moving into this house in Medford, New Jersey. At the time, none of us could imagine how much our lives were about to change in just 18 months. The accident occurred actually a little ways behind me. On December 18, 1990, I was hit by a car while riding my bike home from the store with a friend. I was a quarter mile from my house and just 12 years old. I wasn't wearing a helmet, and my head injuries were severe. I was life flighted to Cooper Hospital in Camden, where doctors scrambled to save my life. And because of the efforts of those doctors, I'm lucky enough to be able to say that this is where my story begins, and not where it ends. After several months rehabbing in the hospital, I was able to move back home. I would require 24-hour nursing care, but the nurses who have come into my life have become a part of my family. I like to think I've worked off on them at least as much as they've helped me. But I've adjusted, and with a little hard work, I've been able to accomplish a lot that I'm proud of. 
1996, I graduated high school and went on to graduate from Burlington County Special Services a few years later. I've even become an advocate for others with brain injuries, meeting with Vice President Al Gore at the White House and developing a close relationship with Bank Law. In 2000, I joined Bank Law's Aid Treatment Services. The program gets me out of the house and gives me something to do during the day. More importantly, it's given me an opportunity to develop a friendship with others in the brain injury community. Now let's get like that. My life has changed a lot since my accident, but I haven't let it slow me down. And I certainly haven't let it define me. Just ask the people who know me best. When I look at Brian, I see my son. I see my inspiration. And I see my hero. When I look at Brian, I see courage. I see ambition. And I see a wonderful inspiration to charge boldly ahead. Like a <laughs> I see Brian as my as my best friend. That's why I see Brian. He's my best friend. I, I know I'm his nurse, but uh, he's my best friend first. I look at Brian and I see the world's biggest Notre Dame fan. <laughs> <laughs> my baby brother all grown up. And he inspires me every day. My name is Brian Quick, and I'm one of the five million Americans living life with a brain So tonight, I'm going to read you some poetry. I find poetry has helped me in many ways because you have to think about what you're writing in the process the causation. Okay. Joyful times, and I hope we all have joyful times. So my first poem is joyful. Happiness takes 
me away so far that all reality seems to become invisible to me. I imagine myself so high like a bird. Cutting through summertime clouds. Recapturing what I've left behind. Suddenly, as I softly touch down on reality, My wings begin to open up for my landing. Now my eyes experience all of the new surprises for that day. Reality has to Deeply sink in for my rush to disappear. Yeah. Everything is 
ten times harder. Although I feel uneasy over the setbacks, I keep taking steps forward. I continue to job on while doing the impossible to defeat all of the challenges life has given me. I know great feelings will come about after accomplishing life's total challenge. Smoking at it too because <laughs> it's too cold to go outside. The feeding tube did not get taken out of the closet, defense and veterans, brain injury centers. Some of the staff members were nice. I was there for a year and a half and then I came to Bancroft. I have some challenges because I have a brain injury. My nose runs all the time now. I'm bumpy and grouchy sitting <laughs> There's a patient at the other place that picked on me all the time. I went into my shell. Then there was the veterans pilot program, and I was the first vet to come to Bancroft for it. Bancroft did lock me. I like it. Lois and Sandra got me walking again. He speaks. I learned to be friendlier and to think. I lost a lot of weight here, too. My sister Sandy likes that. <laughs> In OT, I work on the iPad. Bancroft brought me out of my shell. I found that I still like people. I like all the staff members here. I think the staff members like me. 
I still go into my shell sometimes when I feel that I'm not liked or people love me. I'm looking forward to going to the 1060 building full time. I also want to be on my own in my own apartment someday. Of course, my only goal is to have no goals. <laughs> My sisters and I love them very much. I want to thank Anna Wayne and Nancy for coming here to see me. I want to thank Arlene, Grace, and the residential staff for helping me and pushing me to do better. I also want to thank Barbara for <laughs> being so nice to me and taking time out of my day to give me my kipkas. <laughs> I want to thank Joe and Laquita, Bill and Jenny for helping me. I want to thank Kirsten, Lisa, Lois, Sandra, Dr. Boyer, Chris Partridge, Mark G, Alana Holly Stamper, Jeanette Charles for all the help. Thank you. But right now, we'd like to introduce Miss Jackie Rowe. Hi, everyone. Hi, Jackie. I'm Jackie Rowe. I'm Miss Rowe. Rowe.
like to invite up Miss Elizabeth Tropia. Hello, my name is Liz Tropia and I'm 45 years old. I resided in Gibstown, New Jersey before my injury on January 14, 1988. I was only 19 years old. I enjoyed working at my job in Cherry Hill and working out in the spare time. On January 14, 1988, I was in a motor vehicle accident that resided in my I was in a coma for four months, and I cannot remember anything from that time period. I was of my brain injury. I had memory deficit and difficulty living without a cane or a wheelchair. After attending outpatient therapy and living at home with my mother, I decided that it was best for me to seek outpatient facility and working out to be independent. I felt that my mother didn't tell you too much for me. And it was important for me to do the things from work on my own. Shortly after I made the decision, I found Bancroft. After my injury, I have learned how to walk without a cane, and I consider this an accomplishment. It makes me happy to say, that I, I have achieved some level of independence and I am living in, a, in an apartment helping to clean and cook for myself. I am thankful for making the decision to come to Bancroft. I have met some wonderful people here. My therapists have helped me a lot and I, tr I try to put, to put my, all my, to put out my, Oh, oh, all of them into them without complaining. <laughs> I want to walk, and if you want something, <coughs> you have to, a lot of work, you have a lot of work to do. You have to make them fit into your life. 
That is, the goal you have to set for yourself. Even though I have accomplished a lot here, I still have a lot of work to do. As I work further, I want to continue to grow and progress. I would like to thank Joe and Michelle, Mike and Carla, Danielle and Mike, Paul and Selena, who have helped me a lot, who have been helpful and very supportive. I would like to thank Stan, who are very caring and wonderful people, especially Lois, who is the best physical therapist I've ever had, my nurse Brian, OT Sandra, my cognitive therapist Angela, for helping me with my speech, Jen, who is my current and past program manager, Fran and Freddie. If I forgot to mention anyone, I appreciate all of your help, and my thoughts are always with you. We lost a member of our family this year, um, oh, Miss yeah. Shanetta Simmons, um, who I had the pleasure of working with. Uh, I was actually managing Pacing Group Home um, when Shanetta came with us. Um, and it was an honor and a pleasure to work with her throughout these years. I think it was around 10 years, was it not? Yeah. Somewhere around yes. there? Yeah. Around 10 years. Um, so, Tamika, her daughter, is kind enough to be here today and mm -hmm. going to say a couple words for us. Um, maybe about Bancroft and, and mom's memory, um, how she affected us all, friends and family. So, if you would, Ms. Tamika Simmons. very nervous. Um, we're going to cry, we're going to laugh, we'll probably cry some more, but I'm going to get through it. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Randy Pausch. Um, I love him, love him, love him, and I feel like I'm addressing the elephant in the room right now, so to speak, so I'm not going to get into all that. Just My mom, um, it was a normal day. She, we lived right next door to each other, and it was just like a regular, normal day, having breakfast. She was actually sitting at the table, and she was cracking jokes on my sister, like tearing her up. <laughs> <laughs> she was just lighting into her, and she began to laugh like real hard, laugh, and we were laughing with her. And so she's like, "Oh my God, I need to stop laughing. My head is hurting." So we're like, "Loosen up your scarf, you know." Let take your scarf off. So she did that. So she was laughing some more, joking some more. And then she's like, no, this headache is getting worse and worse. So we looked at her and we're like, okay. My brother's like, well, go sit on the sofa. So she went and she sat on the sofa. And then when she went to get up again, she collapsed. And, you know, they rushed her to the hospital. They did all the tests. Um, they found out that she had an aneurysm that burst. And they didn't expect her to make it. She died like three times on the table. And um, it was very traumatic. They said that she would never walk again. And thanks to Bancroft, she did. <laughs> they said that, you know, her speech, she would never be able to talk, you know, again. You all know. I think, this is his name, what's his name? Brian. Brian, she had you beat because her mouth was huge. <laughs> um, you know, so different things she began to do and the accomplishments, um, the accomplishments that she made in Bancroft, it, you guys, I accredit everything to you and to God, of course, because you guys were so influential in her life. So, you know, she had this thing where she would say, see, <laughs> after everything, she would say, see, you know what? <laughs> After everything, she would, she would say that. And then um, I, I didn't have anything written down. I didn't know what to say. I, I was like, oh, you're not going to cry. You're not going to, you know, you're not going to, you're just going to get up there and talk about her. And I just wanted a ball because you, you guys remind me of her so, so much. And every day I miss her every single day, and I know you guys miss her too, but she was everything to me, and just to be with her that night before, and then just gone, it's, it, I was really angry for such a long time, but then I went to see Cheryl, I don't know if she's here, I went to see her, the ladies at Boss, 
and I stayed with them for like an hour and they we laughed, we cried, we hugged, we laughed, we cried some more and you know they really helped me to get through it and the one thing I would leave with you all is never, and I know you guys don't, but never take that that a moment for granted because I was with my mom the night before, I was with her for hours and I never saw it coming, like I just, um, I don't, I forget her name back there, but she was doing, Adrian was doing stand-up comedy, she was telling me all these knock-knock jokes, I'm laughing and we're laughing and we're sitting there and she's, and, and I'm looking at her and she's looking at me and I'm like, I never saw it coming and I beat myself up for so long because I, I wanted to hug her before I left and I wouldn't hug her because she had like this mask on and she, you know, she had pneumonia and I was sick the week before and I'm like, I don't want to hug her, you know, I don't want to get sick again. I was just out of work for a week and when I look back over that moment, that's a stolen moment that I would never, ever get back again. So I miss my mom so, so much. I miss her every day. And you guys were so amazing. Dr. Boyer, Grace, Steph, Cheryl, oh my God. I I love you guys so much and I thank you guys so much for all the care and all the work that you did with her for her because because of you. Everyone that says she wouldn't is a liar because she was <laughs> able to do everything that everyone says she would never do again. So I thank you guys so much for even taking this time to you know, honor her, cause, and just to show the love and appreciation that you guys have for her. I appreciate and love you guys so much. Thank you.